Hi, I'm Brian Huang from Hunter College High School in New York City, and I'm honored to be presenting my research on finding new sufficient conditions for the existence of a trapped surface in a spherically symmetric space-time. In the field of general relativity, one main point of interest is black hole formation. The conditions surrounding black hole formation are not yet fully understood, but one main feature of a singularity in space-time is its surrounding event horizon. So if we can predict the event horizon, then we can predict black hole formation. However, the event horizon is a global property of a space-time and requires knowing the entire causal structure of a space-time in order to predict. And it is impossible to do this using current mathematical techniques, so it is very difficult to detect an event horizon in a space-time. Thus, in order to detect black hole formation, we want to instead use some local rather than global geometry property of a space-time. Using the concept of a trapped surface helps address the deficiencies associated with detecting event horizons. A trapped surface is defined as a boundary in space on which the area of an outward facing shell of light decreases over time. Trapped surfaces have several useful properties. First, they can be predicted using only the local geometry of a space time, such as on a time slice, which is obtained by holding the time coordinate constant in the space time. They also result in gravitational confinement, so that the matter inside the trapped surface is sealed away from interacting with matter outside the trapped surface. Finally, given certain assumptions on the space time, the existence of a trapped surface is enough to imply that a singularity must form in the future of the space time, thus resulting in black hole formation. One important unsolved problem in the field is the trapped surface conjecture, which formalizes the notion that black holes form from concentration of matter. The trapped surface conjecture, or TSC, states that for any given mass, there must exist some sufficiently small volume where if all the mass is contained in, within this volume, then the trapped surface must exist in the space time. The trapped surface conjecture has not been fully proven yet, and most previous progress on this proof has relied on several constraints, such as spherical symmetry, axial symmetry, the maximal slice, which is, which is a geometric property of a space-time, and time symmetry, which implies that the evolution of the space-time is identical instantaneously forwards and backwards in time. In my research, I was interested in the past results of Bison et al., 1988. In this paper, the authors discovered two sufficient conditions for the existence of a trapped surface in a spherically symmetric space-time. Their first result relies on time symmetry and states that a spherical boundary in such a time slice is trapped if the enclosed mass content, or integral of energy density over the enclosed volume, is greater than or equal to the proper radius of the boundary. Their second result relies on the maximal slice and states that a spherical boundary in such a time slice is trapped if the integral of the energy density minus outward radio flow over the enclosed volume is greater than or equal to 7 six times the proper radius. My research accomplished several goals. First, I found that there exist space times containing trapped surfaces which are not at all predicted by the results of Bison et al. To address this problem, I found several alternative sufficient conditions, some of which do predict uh, trapped surfaces in these space times where the results of Bison et al. fail to be satisfied. Finally, I generalized the results of Bison et al. to space times possessing neither time symmetry nor the maximal slice, thus proving the TSC for general spherical symmetry. In my research, I used techniques from differential geometry and from calculus, such as integration by parts, to deduce conditions for trapped surfaces in terms of geometrical quantities, such as mass, proper radius, and proper area. I started off by using the initial data on a time slice, which is fully described by two tensors, the metric and the extrinsic curvature. In terms of this initial data, we have what are called the Hamiltonian constraints, which serve as expressions for the pointwise energy density and pointwise momentum density everywhere in the time slice. We also have what is called the expansion condition. On any two surface in the time slice, we have an expression for the null expansion, which describes the rate of area expansion of an outward facing shell of light on the surface. The surface is trapped if and only if this expression is non-positive. We also have simplifications of our initial data in spherical symmetry, the maximal slice, and time symmetry. In spherical symmetry, we have access to the isotropic coordinates, which allow us to greatly simplify the metric and rewrite it in terms of a conformal factor. In the maximal slice, we have that the trace of the insertion curvature, which is equal to the mean curvature, is equal to zero. In time symmetry, we have that the entire extrinsic curvature is identically zero. In my preliminary numerical calculations, I found that the space-time modeled by the constant density star constrains trapped surfaces which are not predicted by the results of Bison et al. 
First, I tested the expansion condition in the constant density star, and I found that every surface of coordinate radius greater than or equal to one is trapped. However, when I tested the results of Bison et al., I found that the mass content does not exceed the proper radius for, uh, for any point in the space time. This, results, this poses a problem in our understanding of trapped surfaces. The constant density star contains only static matter energy, so any trapped surfaces that form should be a result of concentration of the static matter energy in a small volume, as the trapped surface conjecture would imply. However, using previously known conditions, we are unable to show that this is the case. To help address this problem, I found two other sufficient conditions for the existence of a trapped surface in a spherically symmetric, time-symmetric time slice. My first theorem states that a spherical boundary in such a time slice is trapped if its enclosed mass content is greater than or equal to half of the proper radius plus the square root of the proper area of the boundary over 4 pi. My second theorem states that a spherical boundary in such a time slice is trapped if the integral of proper area to the 3 seconds power times the derivative of energy density with respect to the coordinate radius over the enclosed volume is greater than or equal to the proper area of the boundary to the 3 seconds power times the pointwise energy density at the boundary. We can see that theorem 1 agrees with the trapped surface conjecture. The condition in theorem 1 states that a mass related quantity must exceed the sum of two volume related quantities in order for a trapped surface to form, which agrees with the notion that trapped surfaces form when a very large mass is concentrated in a certain volume. In addition, when I tested theorem 1 in the constant density star, I found that theorem 1 predicts that every surface of coordinate radius greater than or equal to approximately 1.764 is trapped in the constant density star. This roughly agrees with our prediction from the expansion condition, and it shows that theorem 1 is a much more effective predictor of trapped surfaces than the results of Bison et al. in the constant density star, which failed to find any trapped surfaces at all in the, in the constant density star. As for theorem 2, we can see that the condition in theorem 2 requires an upper bound on a mass related quantity, the point length energy density at the boundary, to be satisfied in order for a trapped surface to form. This seems to deviate from the expectations set by the TSC, where we would expect a lower bound on a master weighted quantity to be satisfied in order for a trapped surface to form. In addition, theorem 2 is limited in its usefulness. In spherical matter distributions, which are most dense at the center, which most closely models real life stars, we can see that the condition in theorem 2 has a left hand side which is strictly non positive, but a right hand side which is strictly positive. So theorem 2 can never be satisfied in such space times. The main result of my research was a generalization of the conditions of Bison et al. the space times possessing neither time symmetry nor the maximal slice. My theorem 3 states that a spherical boundary in a spherically symmetric time slice is trapped if the mean curvature is non-negative everywhere inside the boundary and the previous condition of Bison et al. in a, in a maximal slice still holds. My theorem 3 constitutes significant progress on the proof of the TSC. Almost all previous progress on the proof of the TSC has relied on either or both of the constraints of time symmetry or the maximal slice, and many proofs that do not use either constraint rely on complicated notions of volume, such as the schoen yau radius. However, my, proof, uh, my theorem 3 uh, does not rely on either time symmetry or the maximal slice, and it still relies only on elementary notions of volume, such as proper radius and proper area. In addition, we can see that theorem 3 is useful in a CMC slice or constant mean curvature slice where the mean curvature is positive. And CMC slices are often found in asymptotically flat spacetimes or cosmologies. And in fact, since we can choose the sign of the mean curvature over time slice based on which time direction we use as a reference point, uh, theorem 3 is actually viable in any arbitrary CMC slice. Also, in my proof of theorem 3, I used a second term that was proportional to the mean curvature, which vanished in the final result. So we can see that theorem 3 becomes a stricter sufficient condition, and therefore a poorer predictor for trapped services, when the mean curvature takes a very high value. We can see that theorem 3 is most effective at predicting trapped services in the maximal slice or in the near maximal slice, where the mean curvature takes an infinitesimally small value. Finally, we can verify that when the mean curvature vanishes and we are working in a maximal slice, my theorem 3 reduces to the main result of Bison et al. in a maximal slice. As a whole, my research constitutes significant progress on the proof of the TSC. 
Previously, the most general proof of the TSC in spherical symmetry has also relied on the constraint of the maximal slice. So the TSC was not proven in general spherical symmetry. My research took this previous result and discarded the constraint of the maximal slice. So my, uh, my result was that the, the TSC is true in any arbitrary spherically symmetric time slice. In addition, you can see that theorem two seems to not be fully consistent with the TSC and may suggest other ways for a trap surface to form. So my results also show possible extensions beyond the TSC in a spherically symmetric, time symmetric time slice. We have several possible feature avenues of research that we can pursue. One feature direction includes the small perturbation of spherical symmetry, which we can mathematically formulate by rewriting the conformal factor. This new conformal factor would be the sum of two functions, where the first function is dependent on the radial coordinate only, and the second function, in addition, is infinitesimally small and dependent on all three space-like coordinates. Another feature direction is the axially symmetric case in Brill coordinates, which have only recently seen heavy use in the literature. The Brill coordinates are very useful because they have a greatly simplified form of the Ricci scalar. In any arbitrary coordinate system, the Ricci scalar would normally take a very long time to commute to compute and would take several pages long ex of expressions. But in the Brill coordinates, the Ricci scalar is only one line long, which greatly simplifies calculations of the energy density, especially in time symmetry. I would like to acknowledge my mentor, Dr. Marcus Curry, and the Stony Brook Mathematics Department, as well as my friends and family, and my school research advisors, and the Stevenson Foundation and Discovery Education for just supporting me throughout this project. That concludes my presentation. Thank you.